بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد After we uh, concluded جزء ما uh, I think it's very beneficial to uh, give the tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha uh, the reason for that is that uh, it's a surah that we have to recite in every salah uh, and therefore uh, understanding the surah and going through its meanings and living the spirit of the surah is uh, quite important for us to be able to focus on salah. Surah uh, Al-Fatiha is a Meccan surah. The predominant opinion is that it's a Meccan surah. There's a difference of opinion. But I'll give the, uh, the evidence of those who are of the view that it's a Meccan surah. Abu Sa'id ibn al-Mu'alla radiyallahu anhu said, one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I will teach you uh, a surah which is the greatest surah in the Quran before I leave the masjid. And then a while later, he took him by his hand and they were about to walk out. Abu Sa'id stopped and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, did you not just tell me just a while ago that you will not leave the masjid before you taught me the greatest surah in the uh, Quran? He said, Yes. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is as sab'ul mathani wal Quran al Azim, the seven often repeated verses and the great Quran. This is reported by Al-Bukhari. Now, this As-Sab'ul Mathani Wal Quran Al Azim is, refer is referring to a verse in Surah Al Hijr. And Surah Al Hijr was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Surah Al-Fatiha. And Surah Al-Hijr by consensus is a Meccan Surah. So you get the logic now. Surah Al-Hijr was revealed after Fatiha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam referred to it and it is Meccan. So since the Fatiha was before it, then it must have been Meccan as well. The uh, name of the surah is Al-Fatiha. Fatiha is the opening because it was the uh, it is the opening of the Mus'haf, it is the opening of the Salah. When you start reciting, you have to start uh, Fatiha first. Uh, it is called Al-Sab'ul Mathani, the seven uh, often repeated verses. Al-Qur'an al azim as in the uh, verse. Uh, it is called Surah Al-Hamd or Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ummul Kitab, the foundation of the book, Ummul Quran, the foundation of the Quran, and, and so on. There are different surahs. It is the first surah from the Quran to be revealed complete in one go. This is the first surah to be revealed. Regarding the uh, reason for the revel for uh, revelation, then there is no uh, sound or authentic uh, evidence uh, that can stand to be uh, the reason for revelation. Uh, the narrations reported uh, are very disputable and uh, controversial with regards to the chain of narrations in Allah. Now, the first thing about Surah Al-Fatiha is that we start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Before we go into the meaning of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we must mention that there's a difference of opinion amongst this uh, opinion amongst the scholars whether or not Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is part of the Fatiha. Now Fatiha is seven verses by consensus. Whether or not Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is part of that, well, there's a, a difference of opinion. Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen is one of the uh, scholars who hold the opinion that it is not. It is not part of the Fatiha. And his argument is the following narration, which is reported uh, by an Imam Muslim. Actually, narrations, because there are more than uh, there is more than one narration. Uh, 
the first narration is a Qudusi narration which is reported by an Imam Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jal says, I have divided the prayer, meaning the Fatiha, between me and my slave in two halves. One half is for me and one half is for my slave and my slave shall get what he asks for. So when the slave, the Prophet ﷺ says, when the slave says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah will say, my slave praised me. When the slave says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah Azza wa Jal will say, my, my slave extolled me. When he says, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah will say, my slave glorified me. When he says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Allah says, this is between me and my slave. And my slave shall get what he's asking for. Then when he says, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Allah will say, this is for my slave. And my slave shall get what he's asking for. Now, since Fatiha is seven verses, we have three verses in the beginning that are for Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. These are all talking about Allah. So that's, and then, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een is number four. It's between Allah and the slave. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين is for the slave so that's three one and three that's a total of seven and therefore Fatiha is not part of the surah this is the argument of Sheikh Al Uthaymin رحمة الله عليه there is another narration by Anas رضي الله عنه which is also reported by Muslim and some, some of its narrations are also reported by Al-Bukhari and Ahmad Al-Bayhaqi and, and many others. But this particular wording is for, uh, is reported by an Imam Muslim. Anas said, I prayed behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and behind Abu Bakr and behind Umar and behind Uthman. You know, Anas is the one who lived he was the last companion to die, radiyallahu anhu, aged 100. So he lived through the caliphate of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali. So he said, I prayed behind the Prophet وسلم, and these three, and none of them recited Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim aloud in their prayers. Again, if it was part of the Fatiha, then it would have been recited aloud. Now, let's get to the meaning of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the All-Merciful, the Eternally Merciful. Bismi, in the name of, in the name of the the letter ba in bismi in the name of or in the indicates in arabic that there is an action that's going to be i am by the name of allah is i am going to do something okay and allah azza wa jal is teaching the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to put his name, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his qualities before saying or doing anything. And these are teachings to the Prophet وسلم, and to his ummah after him to make the name of Allah Azza wa precede anything they say, anything they write, anything they do. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim or Bismi Allah. Sorry. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal is the word Allah is a 
proper name belonging to him, the Almighty, the Creator, the Sustainer, the One, the Only. It is a proper name for Allah Azza wa Jal alone and no one else has the right to be called that name. No one can be named Allah. Unlike other names that are joint between Allah Azza wa Jal and His slaves, right? Someone can be Kareem and Allah is Al Kareem. So the name is used. Right? But I cannot say someone is Allah. This is only for Allah. Ar Rahman and Rahim. These two names are derived from Rahma, mercy. The uh, all merciful, the ever merciful. The eternally merciful, ever or eternal merciful. Uh, and they're both intensive forms of the word. Ar Rahman and Rahim are intensive forms of the word. Uh, Ar Rahman, scholars said, uh, indicates the all encompassing mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, while Ar Rahim indicates that it is a mercy that is everlasting and just like the name Allah cannot be used by humans the, the name Ar-Rahman cannot be used by humans whilst Rahim can be used you can say so and so is Rahim but you cannot say so and so is, is Rahman this is exclusive for Allah just like Allah is exclusive for Allah Azza wa So the meaning of Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim would be, I start my recitation with the name of Allah Azza wa whose mercy has encompassed everything. The Almighty. Okay. Now, let's start the first set which belongs to Allah Azza wa As Allah said, part is for Him, and part is for the slave, and then the middle is between him and the slave. The part that's for him, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Malik Yomidin, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Malik Yomidin. Right? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen means all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Praise, Alhamdulillah, here is all types of praise with all the meanings that can be held under that, that word. Praising Allah Azza wa Jal, exalting Allah Azza wa Jal, glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal. Rabb, alhamdulillahi, Rabbil Alameen. Rabb is translated as the word Lord, but however, the word Lord does not really convey the, the, the uh, beautiful meanings that the word Rabb, in Arabic has. The word Rabb uh, has many different meanings included in it. It means the owner, the creator, the master, the ruler, the controller, the sustainer, the provider, the guardian, and the caretaker. All of that. All of that is under the, the, the name Ar-Rabb. The caretaker. He's the one who guides people to good who enables them to do good and he warns them against evil and enables them when they're sincere to refrain from evil. He runs their affairs, he, he showers them with uh, bounties and favors and mercy. Again, the name Rabb cannot be used for humans without being attached to something like Rabbul Bayt the household the head of the household Rabbul Mal the owner of the wealth but Rabb alone singled out cannot be used to describe someone so you cannot say so and so is the Rabb you have to say 
the owner of, the head of something. It has to be two words. But singled out, it cannot be used. Al-Alameen, the world includes everything other than Allah. Al-Alameen, it includes everything other than Allah, the Almighty. Alhamdu, Allah Azza wa Jal loves praise. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi, classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, there is nothing dearer to Allah Azza wa Jal to Allah than being praised. His slave praising him. And in the book of At-Tabarani, classified as sound by Al-Albani, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, when Allah Azza wa Jal bestows a, a favor or a bounty on his slave, and his slave on a slave, and the slave praises Allah and thanks Allah Azza wa Jal for it, then his praise and gratitude for the favor is better for him than the favor. Give an example. If Allah Azza wa Jal bless, blesses one of us with something, uh, let's say a good, pious wife, obedient wife who takes care of him and his children and, 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 and. Let's assume that there is a woman with this description who does not do anything wrong to her husband. He asked Allah for this favor and Allah gave him his favor, this favor, or Allah Azza wa without him asking, blessed him with a favor like this. Then he thanked Allah, praised Allah for such a beautiful gift. This praise and gratitude to Allah is better for him than this wife. Why? Because this wife will eventually leave him or him leaving her. They will die. One of them will die before the other. So eventually they will depart. But his praise and gratitude to Allah is everlasting. That is the meaning of the saying of the Prophet Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The, the uh, eternally merciful, the, the ever, ever merciful, the especially merciful, the different meaning. But it's referring to the all-encompassing, everlasting mercy of Allah Azza wa We've gave the description uh, or the details of that. But let me, uh, let me just add. Allah Azza wa after mentioning Rabbil uh, Alami, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alami, He described Himself. Now the praise is due to this Rabb, this great Rabb. And then he gave the description of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Usually, someone who is in control, a master, uh, his control, his power, his authority can make him someone who is aggressive, who is a dictator, right? This is the indication of the controller, the word the controller, the master, right? So this leaves a feeling of fear with people when they hear this word, right? That's why Allah Azza wa as the scholar said, followed that with description of His mercy, so as to comfort the souls and hearts of the slaves so that they can worship Him with ease of mind and comfort of heart. Maliki Yawmiddin, the uh, sovereign of the day of recompense. Malik also means the owner. And both names indicate that he alone is worthy of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alhamd, the praise. And it also means that he alone has control over the affairs of his slaves in this life. And it means that he alone will be running the matter on the day of recompense. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, لِمَنِ الْمُنْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom does kingdom belong today? Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. 
When Allah asks this question, لمن الملك اليوم? It will be after every living thing had died. And Allah alone will be left. So he will ask, ask this and no one will be there to respond. So Allah will respond to his question himself saying, لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ it belongs to Allah, the one and only, the all-powerful, irresistible, subhanahu wa ta'ala. A deen is recompense. We must know, and Allah is telling us, that you will face the consequence of whatever you do. You will be recompensed for whatever good, or evil you do in this life and the controller of that will be him no one can escape on that day now this set is the set referring to Allah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. All talking about Allah Azza wa Jalla.